you you like your dog, right? He's all right. Don't give me that. You're, uh, you <laughs> he might be corg- watching. You're the only person I know who owns a corgi who wears corgi shirts, corgi hats, cor- corgi jackets. This is all true. This is all true. All right, all right. Yes, I do love my dog. Yeah, and I and I love my family's dog too. He's got we got a little mint pin and a little uh, little pomeranian, and mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm I'm friendly with that, but. We do have a member of our uh, know-it-alls, our Arquitas, mm-hmm. who uh, is having a dog problem, and he thinks that maybe an Arduino could help. All right. Well, Joseph asks, does anyone have a suggestion for an Arduino-driven speaker that can produce 23 kilohertz to 40 kilohertz? I am setting up a motion sensor dog deterrent. Okay, I, I get it. So mm. it sounds like um, either he's not a big fan of, of his neighbor's dogs and wants to keep them off his lawn, or maybe right. he has a dog, but he wants to keep the dog away from certain things. Yes. That's, yes. that's all very, very doable. Uh-huh. And believe it or not, we already did this project. Well, not really, but really kind of yes. But in a different... In a different, a different capacity. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> a do, different goal. Do you remember way, way back, uh, last year, like in the uh, sub-200 episodes, we actually did an Arduino ranging project? Yeah, we were... You were going to set it up in your dad's garage, right? Yeah, so it's you a, have like a proximity sensor? Precisely. And yeah. the whole idea was you use a little ultrasonic sensor, super cheap, a 99-cent ultrasonic sensor mm-hmm. combined with a $2 Arduino and a strip of uh, WS2812 LEDs, and it actually gave him a status report. As he got closer, there were fewer, fewer lights, and they started to turn red until it was like one light red, which means, no, really, there's yeah. no more room. Stop. You're up against the wall. Stop. Now. Oh, yeah. by the way, that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> I'm my guessing. dad hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that his fault or your fault? <laughs> well, he asked me, he said, well, I thought it would, like you would go to zero lights, and zero lights, was, I'm like, Oh, Dad. Dad. Oh, Dad. This is the whole, we start on three, and I, uh, never mind. Right. Okay, so, but that's the same idea. The same idea is you use an ultrasonic detector, and you use some sort of notification device in order to send out your deterrent. Mm-hmm. Now, in this particular case, you don't actually want a speaker. What you want is a transducer. Now, Alex, we've got a, uh, there we go. This is the one I was thinking of. It's a 40 kilohertz, so, so you won't hear it. It's mm. ultrasonic. You will not hear this. Dogs definitely will. This will be annoying to a dog. 35 watt, this is going to be plenty loud, uh, and this thing's only going to cost you $5. Now, huh. uh, this gives us a chance to talk about a little bit about tech. You know, anytime I can talk about science and tech, I love it. Yeah. This is a, a piezo element, a piezoelectronic. Mm-hmm. So, uh, do you remember when we were doing the oscilloscope? Mm-hmm. There was that little component that looked like a little... Uh, I don't know, like an oblong steel container. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was the crystal, the timing crystal. Right, right? the quartz. The something. quartz, right. And that works on the piezoelectronic effect. And the piezoelectronic effect essentially means I can convert mechanical stress to charge or charge to mechanical stress. It's okay. going back and forth. Right? Okay. So in a regular speaker, you would typically have a magnet inside of a coil. And when I energize the coil, it pulls on the magnet, right? Yes. Okay, so what will happen is I, I have a, a wave and that wave is going to energize the coil, and it will duplicate that wave, and then it moves the diaphragm of the speaker, right. which generates sound. Yep. In a piezoelectronic device, I don't have that. I don't have a magnet and a coil. All I have is a material, typically some sort of ceramic, mm-hmm. that when I apply a charge to it, it will create mechanical stress. And if I create it properly, the mechanical stress will vibrate the material at a particular frequency. Okay. And, and then I get that frequency. So in this particular case, huh. this, uh, this, this ultrasonic cleaning pad right. is 40 kilohertz, which I'm not going to hear, but a, a dog, dog will, will. hear, yeah. uh, and it will always resonate at that frequency. Interesting. So, so you don't even have to like direct the sound in a way? Like it just not really. it vibrates and then it just goes... It just, it just goes. In fact, huh. we've used them before. Anytime you've used uh, one of the quadcopters that we've built, Remember that little buzzer that will tell you, oh, yeah, I'm armed or my battery's getting low? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I actually just took one of those. So let's, let's do a little something, something. What? This was the ultrasonic ranging project that we did. I, I pulled this one out of mothballs. And quite simply, it's an, it's an ultrasonic detector it's at so the front. Cute. Little, little face. Uh, a standard Arduino. Uh, this is powering the ultrasonic detector. This is just the buzzer from a quadcopter. Oh, I so see. remember yeah. uh, the, so those little thing? Beep. Yeah. Right. So and I just have this wired in to ground and then pin seven. And the way it's gonna work is as soon as I get within ten centimeters, Whoa. and you back away, yeah. it turns off. So the thing is, that ultrasonic transducer will work exactly the same as this. It's the same principle. I'm running it straight off of the Arduino. I didn't they don't even need to do any uh, additional power. Hmm. Uh, and actually if you go to my screen, Alex. 
Uh, I'm going to show you what this looks like. So uh, just as we had it set before, this is showing me what distance it's detecting to an object. And as I get closer and closer, you're going to see those numbers going down. And I have it set for 10. So as soon as it passes 10, there we go. Beep, 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 beep. And then I release it, and it's going to go away. The code for this is super simple. I'm, I'm not even going to post this because this is the same code from the ultrasonic ranging project we did a while back. Yeah. And uh, quite simply, if you go back to my screen, I'm, I'm using a library called Ultrasonic H. There's actually other ultrasonic libraries out there. I'm telling it where the pins are for uh, for ranging. Mm -hmm. um, I open up the pin for seven. I tell tell it that it's going to be output. Uh, this is the range debug feature, so this is just sending out to my serial console the, the ranges that it's detecting. Mm -hmm. And then the loop just goes around, it, it sets digital right to low, so it sets the pin to low, which turns off the buzzer, and it's going to get the range, and then it's going to call the function uh, uh, buzzer and pass it the, uh, the value of range. And when it calls buzzer, it's going to say, hey, if that value is less than 10, turn it on, otherwise leave it alone. So I can change this. For example, let's set this for... 20. So I'm now setting it so that it's going to ring me if I get within 20 centimeters of the sensor. Let's wait for it to be done. Okay, good. Let's go back into our serial monitor. 158. Actually, Brian, here, why don't you play our, our dog? 43, 39, Getting closer. 30. No, wait. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, there we go. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Super simple code, super simple device. Um, and actually, you know what we're going to do? Uh, just for you, I ordered a couple of these transducers. We're going to put one together. I'll, I'll make a 3D <laughs> case for it. It'll be like a, a, our dog, dog Arduino. And dog, then dog Duino. does that mean I need to bring in Tibbs to see if it works? Well, yeah, naturally. Okay. I mean, yeah. It's got to work. <laughs> I, actually, I see that's the thing. Um, I don't know how painful this will be for dog. I, I don't like hurting dogs. So, yeah. uh, we, I mean, that would be the tweaking. The tweaking would be to make sure that the dog knows that they're not supposed to be in that area, not just right. let's freak the dog out because it got too close. Yeah. So I, I think the challenge will be the programming because you want to have it say, like if he gets within five feet, like give him a chirp. Right. And then four feet, it's like chirp, 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 chirp. And then, you know, when he's within two feet, it's just stay on. It stays on. Because yeah. the whole idea is he should be trying to get away from the annoying thing. Right, right. Yeah. Hmm. Well, we could always just ask him, like, does this hurt, Tibbs? Is this hurting your ears? Uh, I can talk. I could bring. Him. I could bring in gadget. Uh, but we try to dog whistle with gadget, and he He's, just he just does this. He gets on the ground and oh, puts his paws over his oh head. No. It's like, well, that won't really work. <laughs> this would just be annoying to him. Yeah. Oh, poor gadget. Well, I gotta d unplug this, otherwise it's gonna. Yeah. Yep. Start beeping. Yeah. But the cool thing about this is this project is literally as simple as what I just showed you. You can right. unplug this this little buzzer that we used for uh, quadcopters mm -hmm. and plug in that ultrasonic transducer. Works exactly the same. Well, what I love about those little ultrasonic sensors too is the that you, what you have there, what you said, costs like a dollar or yeah, less for those less parts, that, yeah. and you see those exact same parts on like the Phantom Four, the one that right. can do collision avoidance. And so when you see them where, where they're not even changed, you're like, oh, I know how much those cost, and you're charging how much for this quadcopter? Well, when we went to Developer Week last year uh, at the uh, the docks, the San Francisco docks, mm -hmm. uh, their DJI was there, and they were showing us up there the brand new. There was a development quadcopter, mm -hmm. and it was cool. You know, DJI stuff is is pretty yeah. it's pretty tight, but they had this platform that you could add on, and it was a $600 platform, and it was for collision avoidance. It was just four ultrasonic sensors. And I'm looking at those going, <laughs> those are HS uh, RO4s. I know exactly how much those cost. Exactly. How, why, does this, why is this so expensive? I could do all of this with $3 worth of Arduino stuff. Yeah, yeah. well, you're paying for the brand name. 